All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Chris Pistorius, who is in Denver, Colorado. How are you doing, Chris? Great. How are you doing? Absolutely great. And you are the founder of Kickstart Digital Marketing. Winning results starts with a great strategy, but proven marketing game plans for the dental industry. Okay. So, uh, Chris, first off, let's, let's just start at the beginning here. And how did you get into dental marketing per se? Because I don't know about you, but you know, going to the dentist is never something that particularly like it's something we look forward to. So creating a buzz around uh, dentistry, it's going to be quite a challenge. Yeah, it can be for sure. And, you know, how we got into it is, you know, just I think what you said is that it's hard to market for a dental practice. So if you can figure it out and you know how to do it well, you can be pretty successful in the space. So we did figure it out. We've uh, we've had the agency now for about a little over 12 years. So we've got a lot of experience in it. We get really good results. Um, but you're right. It's it's not easy to create a buzz and get excited about going to the dentist. But if you know what you're doing, you you can do a pretty good job with it. Yeah. So you have a, you you have a, a strategy and and, and help a, a dental practices whatever create a good strategy and a game plan for. So you talk me through that a little bit. And what are the different types of approaches that uh, that work for different types of dentists? Yeah, it's all a little bit different because it's based on, you know, what it is that they're trying to accomplish. So, you know, and that's what sets us apart a little bit is that we're not just a dentist as a dentist, right? Let's put together a marketing campaign, you know, it fits all sizes, right? It's more of a, okay, what makes you different? What's your unique selling proposition? Why should somebody choose you versus the 40 other dental practices that they pass on the way to your office, right? And yeah. who is it that you're going after? I mean, is it the 25 to 35 year old female with two and a half kids owns her own home? Or is it somebody that's 55 to 75 is looking for dentures or dental implants, right? So we, based on kind of those needs analysis calls that we have with clients, we come up with our strategy that way. And it's a little bit different for each client that we approach. Yeah, so obviously one of the things that, uh, I mean, obviously different dental practices do focus in on like whether it's family dentistry, general dentistry, period, whatever, uh, periodontics, et cetera. So I guess at, at, at a basic level, they have a defined market they're going after. But I think like a lot of businesses, even though you have what you think is a defined market, they're still not 100% on who their ideal target customer is. Yeah, no question. And it also changes over time, mm -hmm. right? So we've taken on dentists before they're just starting out with us, start starting in their practice out. They kind of get into it a couple of years in and now all of a sudden, they, you know, no longer do they need to take everybody that has a heartbeat and a working debit card. They can also focus on more specialized cases like dental implants or more higher end procedures like cosmetic dentistry. So mm -hmm. absolutely, but it can also, the strategy changes throughout the life cycle as well. Yeah. So, um, so what are some of the innovative marketing strategies that uh, you employ with dentists? Well, we try to get as creative as possible, first of all. So like, for instance, I'm not sure, are you familiar with Nextdoor? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, it's, a, it's a newer community app, if you will. And we're really doing some good testing in that right now for mm -hmm. dental practices. So you can now advertise at a local level um, and it's working out pretty well for us. So that's something new that we're, we're really embracing as well as Snapchat, TikTok. We're coming up with creative ways to, to use those mediums. Uh, we see those as face, new Facebooks, right? You know, when right. Facebook first came out, it was mostly for kids right? Mm -hmm. Well, now it's for guys my age that's trying to talk to somebody they went to kindergarten with 20 years ago, right? <laughs> so that, that mediums change, and we believe that these new mediums will as well. So we need to be ready um, for when that happens, and it's a little more appropriate for our audience. Yeah, no, I love what you're saying about Nextdoor, because uh, uh, that seems like a great uh, target market, although Nextdoor, they it tends to have to descend it into uh, neighbors arguing with each other rather than helping yeah. each other in the last while, thanks to all the politics but generally speaking why right, i mean that's how we found dentists in the old days wasn't it i mean you yeah. asked around uh, well, what dentist you go to what dentist you go to right. and then obviously that was 
supplanted a little bit by the things like Facebook and Yelp and all of that. But I, I always get the feeling nowadays that perhaps Yelp and things like that, people aren't as trusting of it as they used to be. And going back to this more, like you said, like next door, this more kind of personal where you can actually talk to the person and, you know, say, oh, recommend a dentist or whatever. Right. Um, that seems to be a better a better medium. Uh, I, I think it's going to work out really well. It already is. And um, but it's like others, too. You know, it starts out pretty cost effective for a local business to advertise yeah. there. And once it gets its feet under it a little bit, we'll probably see those ri increases rise. But really, it's all about return on investment and making sure you can track what's working and what's not. Yeah. And how much does the personality of the the dental practice or the lead person there or whatever, how much does that play into your strategy? Because um, it might be one thing to you know, be very innovative in your innovative in your marketing. But if you come into the dental practice and then it's very stuffy and old fashioned, mm -hmm. which some people like, uh, or it's, uh, you know, it, it's out of sync with what's being promoted. Yeah, I think, you know, we kind of figure that out early on without asking them because we can kind of figure out what the personality of the practice is pretty quickly. And if it is more of a fun atmosphere and that's how they want to run their business, we're all for it. And we'll match that with marketing, mm -hmm. right? We'll probably do more video, right? Of funny things going on in the office or Halloween costumes or just the doc doing something kind of cool, right? Where if it is more conservative, a little bit more stuffy, I think, as you put it, um, we probably won't do a lot of those things, right? We'll probably take a little bit more conservative approach to it. So it, it does have a big impact on the campaign. It, it really sets the tone in, in terms of how we really want to put that message in front of people and what it should sound like. And do you sometimes come across uh, maybe the, the the practices are not as aware of how they come across as maybe you would think? So maybe they think they're a funner, cooler place than they are, or maybe they think they're stuffier than they are. Yeah, we don't get that a lot because we kind of feel out the tone. And so we don't have to correct them. It's like, hey, don't try to be something you're not, because we've already mm -hmm. kind of figured that out. But every once in a while, you come across somebody that, you know, thinks that, you know, like, for instance, let me let me give you an example. So in pediatric dentistry, we a lot of times those clients will come to us and they'll want a website that's tricked out like Disney. Right. I mean, it's going to be like, you know, flying unicorns and colorful stuff. And it looks cool to like a five year old, 10 year old. The problem that we have with that, though, is that that's not your audience. Your audience is the 25 or 30 year old mom that's shopping for a mm -hmm. dentist for their kid. Right. So you need to really have a website that reflects her and, and shows something that will impact her. Now, granted, those types of animations and things she's like, oh, maybe that's cute or maybe that's you know great. But you can go overboard with that. Right. And you can make it all about the five year old or the 10 year old. So there are times where we have to correct things like that and just make sure there's some marketing science behind it so that we can get to where we are ultimately hired for. And that's more new patients. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because um, let's face it, what you're talking about there is the trap that people often fall into is, you know, trying to be trying to be a one size fits all. But at the same time, their marketing really targets one part of that puzzle. So as you said, I mean, if that's what you're after, that's great. But if you're after a wider audience, then you have to temper it temper a little bit uh, better. What are some of the great, uh, what are some of the great examples you have, you don't have to name them, but just great examples you've had a, a, of success and maybe with, with dental practices kind of even turning around the, the perception of themselves? Yeah, we've got a lot. And that's really what keeps me going. You know, I kind of jump out of bed in the morning because of this job. And that's one of the reasons, because I have a direct impact on somebody's life. I mean, it's really what it comes down to, maybe over-dramatizing it a little bit. But um, if we do our jobs well and we're bringing, growing a practice, then, you know, what does that mean for the owner's life, the employee's lives, things like that? But to get back to your question, is we've had on numerous occasions had somebody come to us struggling with one practice, and within a year or so, we're not only turned the practice around, but they're now buying other practices. I mean, we've got several multi-location practices that are with us now who started with one struggling one. And so those are the biggest success stories that we like to talk about and case studies that we share. Yeah. And what are some of the things that they did that uh, that helped them? Uh, did they have to change their the image of themselves or was it more of you kind of drawing out what was what was the really essence of what was marketable you know i think it, it went from 
and the reason I started this agency 12 years ago was that, you know, in 20 years ago, you did an ad in the yellow pages, maybe you did a little direct mail and it worked, right? New patients came mm -hmm. in. Yeah. Well, all of a sudden introduce the internet and there's a hundred different ways you can spend your money. And guess what? Only one of them probably works, right? Mm -hmm. So I saw a very complex market. And, and, and what happened in that case is dentists saw this and then they, they might've tried a couple of things that didn't work. And they're like, oh, I'm not doing digital marketing anymore. Right. And so they got into the habit of not doing anything. I call it ostrich marketing, kind of burying their head in the sand and not doing anything. And that's one of the biggest no-nos you can do. And that's why I created this business was let, let's untangle the web. Let's figure out what works, what doesn't. Let's niche into a specific industry so that we can become those experts. And then we can help these dentists, you know, not just do nothing and let their competition just eat them up because it is very competitive. Let's create a, a service here that can untangle the web and, and actually get them results. Yeah, because as you said, I mean, it's it's a big market, it's a, but it's an extremely competitive market. Yeah. And I think most people watching or listening would probably agree that most of the marketing materials and that that they've uh, got from dentists or they've they've received or, or exposed to all kind of a very, very samey, right? Hard to tell the difference. And, and they always start off with, you know, well, free visit for this. And they've got right. smiling people with beautiful teeth. But they all seem, I couldn't tell one from another. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, that's one of the big one of the things that we offer is actually <laughs> having a, a video and a photographer go to the office and take real pictures of real staff, real doctors, the real office, real patients. And because it, it's back to the old sales adage of people buy from people. Right. Mm -hmm. People don't buy from stock images. And I, you know, I had a doctor tell me once that oh, they, they don't know if those are stock images. And I'm like, oh yes, they do. <laughs> you can just tell, right? It's the guy eating the apple or the, you know, whatever it might be. So, you know, one of the things we try to tell them is let's get rid of all stock images. Let's use real, real stuff. And people will identify with that more. And when we're talking about trusting your family, especially during COVID with health related stuff, you've got to really be able to personalize yourself and it will make you different and unique. And so you're absolutely right. We've got it. We, that's one of the biggest things we see is stock imagery and, and everything. And, and we try to fix that very quickly. Yeah. Cause I think you, you just touched on something there that I think is, is very important for people too, is that I think even, you know, even pre COVID people were starting to want a little bit more, connection and authenticity and yeah. that when dealing with people i think covid just put that on steroids now and to your point about yeah i mean dentistry people have health concerns etc uh, as they do visiting anywhere but particularly visiting uh, you know any healthcare facilities and so i think i think what you were talking about there and really uh, the real pictures the real people really bringing out the personality of the dentist that that authenticity, I think, is critical to building the trust that people want from their providers. Yeah, I totally agree. hundred percent. Yeah. And so um, have you seen have you seen more uh, more dentists started to dental practices starting to wake up to that fact now that probably in a pre in a post covid world that they are going to that they are going to have to kind of come out from behind their equipment, if you like, and actually engage more. It's interesting because what we're seeing right now in the industry is kind of a uh, a shift. So we're we're seeing like you know the baby boom baby boomer generation of dentists are starting to retire. Or they have been retiring, and they're selling their practices. You know maybe they're selling to corporate dentistry, um, and we're seeing younger people come in and buy those practices and start their own practices. And so what we see are the younger people are you know they're hip to I guess is the right word hip to digital marketing. And they're a little bit more like, yeah, we got to get on Google. Yeah, we got to do videos. Yeah, we got to do this, that, the other thing, Google, 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 right? Whereas the old guard is more of a, look, this has worked for me for 30 years. I'm not changing now. This is what we're going to stick with. So we're seeing a little bit of a shift there, but we are starting to see some of the older generation of doctors getting ready to sell their practice saying, hey, you know, look, can you give me a little boost here towards right before I sell so that, you know, because a marketing package in my where I rank on Google, for instance, you know, new dentists are asking about that. What's your marketing plan been? Where do you rank on Google? How is your website? And so they're trying to do like a renovation package right before they sell, if you will, marketing package. So it's interesting how that dynamic's going and shifting. But yeah, I, I think it's kind of all over the place right now. 
Yeah, no, that's that's interesting. Yeah, I could I could see that uh, absolutely. If you want to boost things before you sell, yeah. and then as you said, uh, these younger people who are coming in or buying practices, or whatever, have you have you seen a, a difference in it? not just that they're uh, you know savvy with technology, but um, about their approach to the practice in general, to how they present the whole practice, to how they engage with people? Do you see uh, changes coming there as well? I do. I see more technology for sure. Um, and I see a lot more social media aspect. So like, for instance, I see, and we encourage this, a doctor just doing a quick 30 second video on their phone on something cool that they're doing in the practice. You know, you have to be careful with HIPAA laws and stuff, but sure. you know, something that they provide or some service that they provide and posting that on social media and it's working great. Now that's something that the old guard would have never, would have never been involved in. Right. So I think we're seeing a lot of, you know, cool, different technologies, we're starting to get into the business of video reviews now instead of just regular old Google written reviews where we can actually produce a link for a patient to go to and they can do a video review of that uh, of that practice. And then we edit it up a little bit, like it looked pretty. And then we post it on social media for them or we go out and um, we'll actually uh, break those videos up and then do social media paid advertising campaigns with them as well. Yeah, and and I think that's uh, I mean I think that all makes total sense because I think uh, as I said I think people have a greater expectation now of and they and they and when they see digital assets like that I mean once upon a time you know once upon a time when you watch commercials on TV you know maybe you had a little bit of skepticism whatever but social media with those uh, with those digital assets if they're done authentically and stuff you kind of trust them more than you used to trust traditional advertising. Without question, video is uh, video is a whole different game. Again, it's people on people. It's not just written text. People buy from people. People listen to people. People communicate with people. And if you can do that via video, that's just going to be that much better. Yeah. And obviously you live this out because if you go to kickstartdental.com, you'll see Chris there and his little, uh, little chat bubble there and uh, you can <laughs> contact him immediately. Yeah. And by yeah. the way, I have to commend you. I, I also, when I was on your site, your FAQs are done in video form as well, which is just, uh, yeah. which is fantastic, actually. So yep. I think uh, li living what you're preaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Well, this has been great. Uh, great, Chris. Um, all of Chris's information is going to be below this video. And I highly encourage you if you are in the dental business or if you know people who are or if you're just interested in innovative marketing, I would really, really recommend that you go to kickstartdental.com. All of the information will be below this video so you can find it. Uh, but before we go, Chris, uh, do tell us a little more about you and your business. Well, like I said, we've been at it for about 12 years now. When I first started, I was kind of like the new dentist I was talking about. I took on anybody that could pay me and the check would clear. Um, and we we stopped that pretty quickly because every time we had to learn a new industry, it, it was a struggle. So we niched in and uh, now we've got um, 11 employees. We've got um, great people writing content, taking care of accounts. Um, just doing everything we possibly can to be creative and proactive and, and getting our clients what they deserve, which is, which is more new patients. So it's been quite a thrill. We were named the last two years one of the top dental marketing companies in the country. And um, just to think 12 short years ago, we were just you know, barely breathing. So it's been a pretty cool ride. Yeah, no, it's a fantastic, it's a fantastic story. And, uh, and I think, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great area to be in because obviously, you know, dental stuff is important, but anything that can help us get over our reticence and market properly and, and actually make us want to go is probably a great thing, uh, certainly for people my age and that, you know, because I actually told my dentist recently because he was, he was asking me about something and I said to him, you know, going to the dentist is still the only, is one of the few places that the minute I walk through the door, I revert to being about eight years old. <laughs> <laughs> me too honestly i don't even like going to them <laughs> I, I was said because i know you're going to give out to me you're going to like i'm not, yeah. nothing you know the way you go in because no, i don't well personally i'm never speaking for myself i've never gone to the dentist when they've just opened my mouth and gone wow this is fantastic nothing here great on your right. way <laughs> right I you're always just waiting for that moment where they're going to say are you really flossing every day and you're like yeah Right. Honestly. <laughs> yep. Yep. 
you're you're a terrible patient then they want the people that uh they can find something wrong with to, to do exactly some, do some procedures <laughs> exactly no i'm i'm a pretty good patient I'll tell yeah you. um all right well listen chris this has been great thank you so much for this thank you for watching and listening and i will see you all for another interview really soon